welcome to this session on binary search trees. Uh, this is not an introductory session of binary search trees. Let's have a very quick recap because we already know binary search trees. So binary search tree is a, is a binary tree. That's the first condition. It's a binary tree. The second condition on binary search trees is that for every non-leaf node, left child has a smaller value or equal to value than the parent and right child has a greater value than the parent. So this, this is the fundamental definition of the uh, binary search tree. Let's try to work around with a very quick example uh, because uh, the kind of examples which we have already done. For example, if I can provide a sequence 25, 30, 80, uh, 4, 3, 2, these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 numbers. So we call it M is 7. My number of elements are 7. So I, draw, I try to draw the BST. Uh, but before I try, I try to draw the BST and I show you here, uh, take a pause, pause the video, and draw the BST using this sequence yourself so that you can have a quick recap of the, of the BSTs. So hopefully you pause the video and you were able to draw the BST yourself. So it should look like this. We have 20 as the parent, 5 will go on the left, 30 will go on right, 80 will go further right, 4 will go on left of 5, 3 will go on left of 4, 2 will go on left of 3. What is I from the binary search tree? Take a pause for half a minute. Try to compute the height. What's height of your BST? It must match the same. Um, it must match this BST. So hopefully you computed it. That is one, two, three, four. So height is four. But we also saw some examples of the worst case. Then if my sequence is already sorted, then I can end up into a one line or line this way. Which essentially means that my height of the tree, height of the binary search tree is big O n. And the point is that for example, if I had 10, my next element was 9, my next element is 8, 7. So this is a PST, it does not violate any condition, but its site is big n, or big n minus 1. So the problem with this height is that it is it's not giving me any additional benefit as compared to a linked list. So for example, just imagine that I have such 5 in my PST in this tree. So I start my comparison with 10, that if I have, if I has to be part of PST, it has to be on the left. Compared with 9, compared with 8, compared with 7, compared with 6. So Making n comparisons, I will decide that 5 is not there. So my search cost in this kind of BST is big O n. And by this kind, if we generalize it, if we just talk about BST, we, we are not sure about the structure. We are sure about the data, that how things are related to each other, but we are not sure that what would be the depth or height of the tree. So if its height is almost same as number of nodes, then it's not giving me any additional benefit as compared to a single linked list or a double linked list because the search cost in a linked list is also big n, which is linear, so which is very high. So just imagine if I have 1,000 nodes, I have to make 1,000 comparisons. If I have 100,000 nodes, I have to make 100,000 comparisons. Uh, so what we do over here is that we impose an additional condition over here on our DSTs. And the additional condition we, which we suppose over here is that, for example, I will give on the data 10, 5, and 3. I insert, I, I, clear, I, I clear a binary search tree, I insert 10, becomes the root node. Next one is 5. So, but, but before doing any next step, what I do is that I compute what additional attribute of every node. That additional attribute which we compute is known as balance factor. What is a balance factor? Balance factor is the absolute difference of 
right of left subtree minus right of right subtree. So I'll compute a balance factor for every node. And balance factor will be height of the left subtree located on that node and height of the right subtree located on that node and take their absolute difference and I'll call it balance factor and I'll store the balance factor in every node. Why? Because now I'm interested in making my binary search tree a balanced binary search tree. So what is height of the left subtree over here? It's the empty, it's zero. But the height of the right subtree is zero. So zero minus zero, and absolute difference is zero. So I'm putting an additional number in every node that represents the balance factor. So its balance factor is zero. Five comes in, five has to go on left of ten. Five goes here. I need to put the balance factors of the entire branch which has been affected. And what is that entire branch? Five has left subtree empty, right subtree empty, its balance factor becomes zero because left subtree has the height zero, right subtree has the height zero, the difference is zero. What is height of the left subtree of 10? That is now one. What is the height of the right subtree of 10? That is zero. So one minus zero, absolute difference is one, so it's one. So now the second definition which comes into play is that when I call something to be balanced, What we are now considering of is that for a balanced BST balance factor of every node should be less than or equal to one. Why? So if if it would happen zero, that would have been the ideal case. But in practical case, in practical scenarios, there could be a situation that we have to tolerate balance factor up to one. For example, this example. Just imagine that I would have been having only two data items, ten and five, and for my let's imagine three is no more there. So I cannot draw a BST of the two elements uh, with, without having this balance factor one. If five comes first, ten will go on the right. Then five's balance factor will become one. Uh, so that's why we have to keep our tolerance limit up till one. So I, so we'll accept the balance factor of zero and we'll accept the balance factor of one. But if the balance factor goes beyond one, then we'll call it a balance tree and we'll take some measures. <coughs> Let's insert three into the binary search tree. Three will be compared with ten, we'll go on the left. We'll be compared with five, we'll go on from the left. So three will go here. Let's recompute the balance factors of the entire branch. Balance factor of 3 is height of the left subtree is 0, height of the right subtree is 0, we'll make it 0. Height of the left subtree is 1, height of the right subtree is 0, let's make it 1. Height of the left subtree is 1 and 2, height of the right subtree is 0, 2 minus 0 is 2. So the first alert which arises is over here. Because tens balance factor has gone beyond one. If it has gone beyond one, it has violated our condition of a balanced mind research tree. So at least there's one, at least there's one node which uh, which does not adhere to this condition. So once we have this kind of violation, now we need to a little bit analyze it. And the analysis is that where does this violation come from? Where does this violation come from? It is coming from the left child of 10 and then further. So if they would have just left child of 10, that was no more a problem. That was not a problem. But the problem has arised due to left child and its left child. This was the third node, and that caused the benefit factor of 2 over here. So we call it that there is a violation. What we call left to left violation. And and 
what does this violation mean? Violation means that it is uh, violating the conditions of a balanced mind research tree. So if there is a, this kind of situation has arised, so what we do is that we now perform the repair measures. And the repair measures which we perform over here are that on the intermediate node, because see, there are three nodes which are involved in the violation. The parent, the child, and the child of the child. So we'll pick the, the child, and if the violation is left, left violation, we will apply some an operation we will call rotation. We will rotate around 5 in the opposite direction. We will rotate in the clockwise direction. And by rotation we mean that this should become somewhat like this. That 5 should go up. 10 should go on the left, on the right of 5. And 3 remains on the 5 as it was previously. So if you were here, so if, if this would happen uh, like uh, a single thread, we are pulling it this way. While we are pulling it this way, just imagine that if this this was this kind of situation, then they got ordered in, in this way, like these three markers. And this two long branch is causing a problem at red end. So in, what we are interested in is that we want to reduce the height. So in order to reduce the height, what we are doing is that we are doing this way. If you do this way, the, uh, the, the child which was in between, the grandchild and the parent, will become the new parent, and the previous parent will go on the right, because it is greater than the child, and the other one will remain as it was with the blank. So and as a result, what we are getting over here is that we are getting a reduced height, but practically, if you look over here again, if we recompute the balance factor, it's zero over here, it's zero over here, it's zero over here. We get a completely, a perfectly balanced mind research tree. So this kind of operation which we have just performed, we call it right rotation. may arise as a mirror image of the situation like we have 5, we have 10, we have 20. We add 5 into the tree, balance factor over here is 0, the next element is 10. It goes on right of 5, balance factors get updated, its balance factor is 0, it becomes 1. Next element, so no, no variation so far. Uh, the next element which we have is 20, it goes on right of 10. We recompute the balance factors, it's 0, it's 1, it's 2 over here, and there's a violation. Where does this violation come from? It now came from another direction, and the direction is right of 5, and then right of right of 5, and plus the violation, child and great child. So these three nodes are now involved into the violation. That way, we take a little one, we perform the rotation, in the opposite direction, this kind of violation is known as right right violation. We call this due to right child and then right of right child, right right child, uh, sorry, right right violation. We'll, we'll uh, repair this violation by forming a left rotation. By forming left rotation means that now this is just like the same stick which we just talked about and we pull. 5 downwards and 10 and 20 will remain in the same relationship, 10 will go up. So by D3 you look like 10, 5 and 20. We recompute the balance vectors. The recomputed balance vectors are 0, 0, 0, which are the perfect balance vectors. So, so far what we have done is that we have talked about two kinds of violations which may, which may possibly arise over there. Those are left left violation. Or could be right right violation. And these are repaired by some rotations. Or the kind of rotation which we perform over here, over here we perform right rotation. 
for him from left rotation in, in the just two recent examples. Uh, this kind of situation known as, is known as single rotation. It, it's not the situation that is repaired is known as repaired by single rotation. So if you are okay with this kind of uh, situation, so what we are actually getting is that by, what does the rotation give me? Rotations help me to reduce height. And how much height is reduced? The height which we reduce is that if this gets very close to the height of a complete binary tree. And we already know that height of complete binary tree is log n. So its height is approximately log n. And we know that log n is a much more attractive function as compared to n when we talk about the cost. So if by if I have binary tree, it's binary search tree. So my search process is expedited. And if it's almost balanced, its height will be very small as compared to n. So that smaller height will give me a lot of provision to, to speed up my search processes, my delete processes, my insert processes. Uh, so these kind of trees, which adhere to this condition of balance vector, which tolerate the balance vector of 0 and 1, and do not tolerate the balance vectors beyond 1, are known as avian trees. A, B, L are the initials of the three scientists who had proposed these kind of data structures to expedite the search process in the tree. So if you have an ideal tree, you can do the search process in the entity big O log n, uh, as compared to the O n in the worst case of an arbitrary by research tree, which we just talked about uh, at the start of this session. So on this one side, but these are not only the kind of rotations we have seen, seen so far which repair these trees. Those the situations may be slightly more complex. Uh, so what we are going to do is that we are going to conclude this session. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to give you a small mover and that is that try to extend your BST code and implement ABL trees, which are the balanced binary trees we just talked about. The second thing is that uh, draw, uh, draw an ABL tree uh, from the sequence to for it. So as the validation arises, you need to repair it. 9, 15, 17, uh, and that's it. So try to uh, draw BST and see whether you succeed, whether your rotations help you maintain the height of log n or not. Uh, another important consideration while doing this implementation stuff is that each rotation Why? Because it only involves three nodes which are causing the problem. You have to reassign those three nodes. Their child, their children, and parents need to be reassigned. So there are a fixed number of steps which need to be performed in each rotation. So each rotation is a big one operation. It should not, give, it should not impose an additional cost on you in terms of computational complexity. But there is a huge benefit if you even try to gain from it that by such cost will be confined to log error. Uh, as compared to uh, such cost of an arbitrary PST which was before. Thank you for uh, this session.